Doge, so now we have Doge, and then people are thinking, well, you know, if the leading dog token is worth $50 billion, then surely the second largest dog token deserves, you know, at least seven or eight billion, right? Like, I feel like that's the kind of what the mindset of these uh, Shiba people is. Um, so then, of course, they did this other gimmick, right, where they gave me half the Shiba token supply. Um, they were actually not the first project to do this. Uh, so around the end of 2020, there was this weird project called Teller. It's like T-E-L-L-O-R. I think they're a chain link competitor or something like this. But I remember they just like dumped $50,000 worth of their token into my wallet. And then they had their Twitter RB just like basically run around saying, look, look at Vitalik's wallet. Vitalik holds Tellers. He's one of us. He's a supporter. And as soon as I discovered this, I just like publicly has sold the Teller tokens on Uniswap, and this created a bit of a Twitter splat. Now, the Shiba people were more clever. The Shiba people, instead of dumping to that wallet, they dumped to my cold wallet, right? So in a cryptocurrency, right, there's this concept of like cold wallets and hot wallets. Basically, like the thing that actually owns your money is like this 80-digit number called a private key, right? And a hot wallet is when that private key is just stored in memory on your, on your computer, on your phone, really easy to access. Cold wallet means it's either on written down on a piece of paper or it's uh, on a computer that's just never accessed the, the internet, right? So cold is very inconvenient, but cold is also much more secure, right? Because even if that computer has some you know, like viruses on it, like it's, it's like air-gapped, it's not actually going to be able to upload it. So this cold wallet and like, all the money is out of the cold wallet, so it's safe for me to talk about my setup now, right? But it was a laptop that was sitting in Canada, and I also had um, two pieces of paper where I wrote down two numbers on those two pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. One was with me, one was in Canada. And if you add those two numbers together, you get the private key. So because of COVID travel restrictions, and, you know, this is you know, this uh, cold wallets in Canada, like it's very difficult for me to um, actually access it, right? And I'm not sure if they knew this, maybe they just got lucky, but like, basically they, uh, you know, sent a lot of uh, these dog tokens into this wallet where I, it was very difficult for me to access it. But then I saw these dog tokens, I saw more and more people talking about them. And then at some point I real, I realized that like, Hey, these things are worth billions of dollars. And like, you know, there's lots of really good things that you could do with that amount of money. And it would actually be a waste to just like see it go. So I made the decision that like, I would actually power through and figure out how to like safely, like basically get my private key. Um, I actually had to call up my family, tell them to read out their number off of their piece of paper. I uh, entered that into a fresh uh, laptop that I bought from Target. Then I uh, 